In this video, I'll be going over the three simple steps to create long-term wealth. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. There is no secret course that you have to pay for. It is a tried and tested method that has worked for many people in the past. Historically speaking, if you have the discipline to follow these steps, then there is a high chance that you will amass great wealth over the long term. So if this sounds interesting to you, I would encourage you to stay until the end because you may just learn something. How's it going everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name is Brian and I am an investor based in Australia. As this is my first full video, I would like to provide a quick background about me. From an early age, I've always been passionate about saving money, finance and investing. I graduated university with a finance degree and I've been working as a financial accountant for the last 10 years. During this time, I've been honing my skills and knowledge as an investor. Last year, the pandemic opened my eyes on how everything can change in a blink of an eye. I witnessed many people around me being impacted financially by these events. People losing homes, businesses shutting down. It was painful for me to witness. These events inspired me to create this YouTube channel. I want to use my personal experiences and knowledge to help people take control of their finances so they are no longer at the mercy of another black swan event. And trust me, there will be a few more in our lifetime. Now, enough about me. You came here to learn about the three steps, so here they are. Step one, exchange your time for money. To make money, we need money. Go figure, right? Most people get paid by working a job, whether it will be in an office, a factory, or a construction site. You are exchanging your time for money. I want to make it clear that there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. These days, you'll see on social media, particularly on Instagram, people posting about the entrepreneurial life. Being your own boss instead of working for someone else. This is something I would encourage if being an entrepreneur is something you'd like to follow. There is tremendous financial and mental upside working for yourself. If you successfully run a business, you will earn a lot more money than if you work for someone else. However, it may not be feasible for everyone. It sounds great in theory, but it does take a lot of work up front and you'll probably not be paid very well at the start. You may have a family to support so you cannot afford the risk of zero income. There are pros and cons for both sides. Think of it this way. If everyone was an entrepreneur, then the global economy as we know it would collapse. In a world with only entrepreneurs, everyone will be trying to run a business. There will be no one to hire, no one to do the labor work. Simply put, the global economy relies on a large percentage of people who comes to work to do their job, collect their paycheck, goes home, and repeats it all over again. If your circumstances don't allow you to work for yourself, or you just prefer the security of a 9-to-5 job, then it's okay too. It totally depends on your situation. The most important thing is, you have money coming into your account each month. Cash flow is king for this step. Step 2. Use money to invest in assets. A lot of people go their entire life saving their money and keeping it inside a bank. The problem with this is you are losing your money due to inflation which is historically about 2% per year. Inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a currency over time. To combat inflation and build wealth, we need to invest our money into assets. But first, what is an asset? Investopedia defines an asset as something that provides a current, future or potential economic benefit for an individual or other entity. In layman's terms, an asset is a tool that can make money for you. So now you may be wondering, what is the best asset to invest in? Well generally the two most popular assets to build wealth are stocks and real estate. Answering which one is better is a debate for the ages. In my opinion, they are both great but like most things, they have their pros and cons. However, if I had to pick one, I would say stocks are better for beginners. If you are a beginner and never bought stocks before, I would recommend looking into ETFs to start with. An ETF is a type of security that tracks an index. This basically means when buying an ETF, you are buying a basket of many companies mashed into a single stock. For example, in Australia, you can use the Comsec Pocket app to start investing from as little as $50 into an ETF like IOZ, which tracks the top 200 companies on the ASX. This includes big well-known Australian companies like Commonwealth Bank, BHP and Woolworths. Historically, you can expect a return of about 7-10% to per year in the long term if you reinvest your dividends. As you can see, the last 3 years have averaged about 9%. Think of ETF stocks as little soldiers that goes out to recruit other little soldiers and makes money for you while you sleep. There are 6 other ETF options to choose from which provides a good entry into the world of investing. My favourite from the list is the Nasdaq 100 ETF, which basically tracks the top 100 tech companies in the US. 
including Apple, Amazon, and Tesla. As per the title of this video, you can start with as low as $50 and continue investing a portion of your pay every month and let your portfolio compound over time. The brokerage fee for Comsec Pocket App is $2 per trade up to $1,000. And then it's 0.2% of total value of the trade above $1,000. So I would recommend buying in larger amounts to get the most value for your brokerage fee. Stocks create wealth through dividends and share price appreciation. It does not require as much money upfront and can be sold relatively easy compared to real estate. However, it can be more volatile during market cycles and it can bring psychological stress if you keep monitoring the price every day. Investing in an ETF reduces the volatility and price swings due to many companies being mashed together. Therefore, they are perfect for beginners who want to dip their toes in the stock market. I won't go into too much details about stocks versus real estate because I don't want to overburden you with information in one video. I'll save that information for a future video. But to give you a quick summary of real estate, it can create wealth through rent and property appreciation. It can also provide some lucrative tax advantages. However, there is a higher barrier to entry as it requires more money and work up front. So unlike stocks, you can't just start today with a click of a button. So that is why, in my opinion, stocks are better assets for beginners. Step 3. Repeat step 1 and 2 consistently. The lesson in this step is to stay the course and be disciplined. If you just complete the steps once and stop, you're not really helping yourself. In my opinion, step two is much harder to execute than step one. It's easy enough going into work and bringing home the money. Everyone does it. Society and the education system has taught our minds to accept this as the right path. It is considered safe and normal. So it is easy for everyone to follow this. However, when it comes to step two, investing in assets, this is something our education system did not teach us. If you combine the lack of education and the rise of social media where everyone is showing off their new shiny toy, it is easy to see why we as humans want instant gratification when parting with our money. Investing our hard-earned money into assets like stocks does not provide that instant gratification. To combat this, we need to change our mindset. The most important thing is shifting our mindset to buy assets over liabilities. Here is a real life example. Imagine one year ago you had $1,000 of disposable income to spend. In scenario 1, you bought the latest new iPhone for $1,000, even though your current phone was still working fine. When you open the box, your brain releases the chemical dopamine, and you immediately enjoy the instant gratification of holding your new phone and peeling off that sweet plastic seal. The feeling lasts for a while, then it will slowly wear off. In scenario 2, you instead use the $1,000 to buy 10 Apple shares which were worth about $100 at the time. You don't feel the same instant gratification or the chemical reaction in your brain. However, you know the delayed gratification you will receive in the future will pay you back in spades. Now, fast forward to today. A year later, the phone has depreciated and is now worth $800 at most. It has lost 20% in value. This is the perfect example of a liability, something that is expected to lose value over time. On the other hand, the Apple shares are now worth about $150 each, which is a 50% increase. The $1,000 you invested is now worth $1,500. Plus, Apple paid out dividends four times last year. This is a great example of an asset, something that is expected to increase in value over time. If you adopt the mindset from this example, there is no doubt you are on your way to long-term wealth. You just have to stay the course. You may be asking, how long do we stay the course and when do we stop? Well, the answer depends entirely on your end goal. To some, the goal may be to create enough wealth to buy your dream house and live a stress-free life with no mortgage hanging over your shoulders. To others, it may be to retire early and start their own charity or cause they believe in. It is different for everyone. Personally, I would aim to get to a point where the annual income produced by your assets can pay for all your annual expenses, so in theory, you could retire and just live off your assets for the rest of your life. For example, if you had $1 million in shares paying you 4% of dividends per year, you have $40,000 per year minus tax to live off for the rest of your life. Of course, you need to adjust this number to suit your own circumstances. If you have a high mortgage or a family, then you may need more. After that, you can retire early if you wish or continue working for something you believe in without having to worry about money. I personally cannot see myself retiring early if I got to this stage because I would always want to be doing something, but I would spend more time with my family. In the end, whatever your goal may be, it is important to set a target so you have something to aim for. Once you begin step two, then step three becomes easier because you will be motivated by watching your portfolio grow and compound over time. So please, stay the course and be disciplined. So to summarize everything in this video, 
Step number one, get out there and make money. Step number two, use that money to buy assets. Step number three, repeat step one and two. There is no secret shortcut when it comes to creating wealth. Outside of traveling into the future with a flying DeLorean and buying a book that contains sports results for the next 50 years, this is the next best thing. I just want to end by saying money isn't everything and there are many avenues to happiness. However, life is a lot less stressful when you don't have to worry about money to do the things that you love. The most important currency in our life is time. What you do with that time is up to you. And that's all I got to say about that. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you wouldn't mind, please give it a like so I can reach more viewers. There will be many more of these videos to come so please consider subscribing and turning on the notification button. And until next time, my name is Brian and I hope you have a great day.